Welcome to Steam Locomotives in Miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is rebuilding a 3 inch scale Garrett traction engine and it's part 7. And the official name for this engine is a Garrett DCC tractor. And DCC stands for Double Crank Compound. That's because the engine is a compound, as in it uses the steam twice, through a high pressure cylinder which exhausts into a low pressure cylinder, and it has a double crank. These are the cylinder drain cocks, and there is a problem. When I connected the long rod that operates the drain cocks from the foot plate, one of the arms on the drain cock promptly snapped off. And it wasn't me being too rough with it, it was very very weak, it must have already been fractured. It's only a 6BA bolt at the end of the day. So how am I going to fix this? Well it's quite simple. First of all I strip the part down to its component parts and remove the piece of 6BA threaded rod which still remains in the lever. I'm just using a pair of pliers for this and it came out very easily. The next part of the repair is to find a suitable 6BA bolt. Here is the bolt and it fits into the lever perfectly, therefore that confirms that it is a 6BA bolt. It's best to check before I do the repair and then find out it doesn't fit. There are two ways to repair this. I could have just drilled a hole in the end of the barrel and silver soldered in the bolt, but I didn't want to distort the barrel with all the heat. So I drilled the end of the barrel, tapping size for 6BA and here I'm using a 6BA tap to thread the hole. And now I'm about to screw the bolt into the hole that I've just threaded, but I'm using some retainer. This retainer is an equivalent to Loctite 601 or 603. A lot of the Loctite products are anaerobic adhesives. What that means is, if you starve them of oxygen, the adhesive sets hard and holds the parts together. There are many different types of these anaerobic adhesives. This is Loctite 542. 542 is not a retainer, it is hydraulic seal. The other type of Loctite that are used to hold the bolt into the end of the barrel of the drain cock is entirely different stuff. It's designed to be a retainer and hold parts permanently in place. So if you use retainer to hold steam fittings in place, they won't come out. They'll snap off first. And the only way that I've found to destroy the bond of Loctite 601 or 603 is to heat the part to destroy the adhesive and it's certainly not a good idea to use a blowtorch on a cylinder on a steam engine. That could cause some problems. Now the drain cock's been repaired and fitted back together, I can continue with the job. In the left hand side of the picture, this is the operating rod that moves the lever back and forth and opens and shuts the drain cocks on this side of the engine, and on the other side of the cylinder are two more drain cocks with their own operating rod. The one on the other side was fine, but this one was just bent to a very odd angle, and it was putting too much pressure on the actual lever. The rod has to be bent to clear the valve gear, but it was just bent in the wrong place. I corrected this by rebending the rod in various places, and in this clip, as I move it back and forth, you can see that the clevis is quite free. There's a bit of play. Before it was solid, and it really put far too much pressure on the lever. But it should be okay now. So that's both sets of drain cocks fitted and working. It's a good thing that the drain cock's operating arm broke off at this stage of the rebuild. The boiler cladding, which is very nicely painted, isn't fitted to the engine yet, and bending this rod in close proximity to the boiler cladding was bound to have damaged it. Looking at the photographs of the gear change mechanism, I noticed that there was this thing. This connects the two levers together, but it has a slot at one end, so there is some movement. This part was very rusty, so I cleaned it up using a polishing spindle, sandpaper and Scotch-Brite. And now looking at the video with it in position, I can see that I missed a piece of green paint. I'll live with that for now, I'll scrape it off later. This is a cylinder and I need to make some studs. So using this pair of pliers which had a very sharp cutter, I chopped the heads off eight 4BA bolts. Then I cleaned up the end of the bolts on the belt sander. And in this clip I'm fitting a couple of lock nuts so I can fit the stud to the steam chest at just the right height. But before I do that, I'm using a screwdriver point to clean out the holes. In this clip you can see the principle. I'm using a socket to position the stud at the same height as the rest of the studs. Here I'm using a needle file as a gauge, although you could use any flat piece of metal. And now I'm adjusting the stud to the correct height. And a final check with the needle file tells me that this one's fine. This next clip is out of sequence. It's a shot of the inside of the steam chest, showing how the regulator works. It covers and uncovers a hole. It's a good idea when working near the steam chest 
to make sure that the regulator is in the close position because accidentally dropping a 4BA nut or a stud down this hole would be a major problem. With the last of the new studs firmly in place, it's time to fit the top cover. Unlike a railway locomotive, on a traction engine, the steam chest cover usually incorporates the safety valves. And in this clip, I'm making a gasket. All I'm doing is drawing around the cover, but the end of my pencil is a bit too thick to go through the holes around the cover. But a quick adjustment on the belt sander puts that right. And now I can put the pencil through the holes to mark the position of the holes on the gasket material. And very shortly, the gasket material looks like this. The next part of the job, using a hole punch, is to just punch the holes in the gasket material. And it is surprisingly easy to line up the hole punch with the pencil marks on the gasket material. In this clip, I'm cutting the external shape of the gasket material once all the hole punching was completed. So here's the basic gasket. There's a little bit more work to do though. What I need to do is cut out the middle part. And on a traction engine, this is a very important operation. If I leave the gasket intact, then the safety valves are not going to work. So I cut out the inner part of the gasket and there's plenty of clearance for the safety valves to work. I would always cut out the centre of a gasket anyway, because if you don't do that, over a while the gasket gets a bit soggy in the middle and the centre could drop down and interfere with the travel of the valve. I thought I would take this opportunity, while I still had the scalpel in my hand, to clean the paint off the flywheel rim. And here I'm being especially careful not to allow the scalpel to slip off and mark any of the paint on the inside area of the flywheel. This part of the job was curiously relaxing. And I'm sure you'll agree that the flywheel looks much better now the paint has been removed from around the outer edge. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.